Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to another episode of Malcontent Corner, the corner where I hope to share with you the various tips, tricks, and secrets of things that I've learned in the course of my day-to-day -day life, and I'm sharing them with you in the hopes of making your life just a little bit easier. If you're a subscriber to my channel, first off, thank you for being a subscriber. I really do appreciate you uh, taking the time to subscribe. But hopefully you may have noticed I've not made any videos in the last six months. And for that, I am very sorry. Uh, but there are a few reasons why I didn't. First off is that uh, I had to deal with a family tragedy. Uh, secondly, I have been involved in a home remodeling process that has taken on a life of its own and run a little bit longer than I liked. And lastly, it's been summertime, so I've been spending a little bit more time outside enjoying that summer sun and being hunkered down making videos, just not high on my list. So I'm sorry, but I am here because uh, of that family vi uh, tragedy that I mentioned just a few moments ago, and that was the passing of my father. And uh, that got me thinking a little bit, and that is the reason why I'm going to make this video. Now, in this video, I'm going to cover what I three what I consider to be important points, and a fourth one, which is kind of an elective. But uh, first off, let me start off by leading uh, by saying that uh, in America, we tend to have a very pathological approach to uh, not talking about death, and I get that nobody wants to talk about death. But I've lived long enough to know that basically everybody's going to pass on. And I've seen children as young as three pass away and adults as old as a hundred pass away. Now my hope for you is that you live to be a hundred and you live to be a healthy 100. But somewhere in between there, our alarm clock's going to get punched. Now if you are a younger person and you are watching this, uh, you may want to just keep this in the back of your mind to have a conversation someday with your parents. And if you're an older person, you may want to perhaps take the information of this looking at it from a different vantage point to convey certain things to your children. Now, the first of the four points that I'm going to make here is what do you want done with your remains or what, do your, what does your loved ones want done with the remains? For my family, it was pretty easy. They wanted to be cremated. So it made it cut and dry. But for certain groups, especially those that adhere to certain religious orthodoxies, cremation may not be a viable option and the options run all the way from donating your body to science which is an actual thing because I have a friend who has that written in his will that he wants his body donated to science to cremation to the full-blown funeral service with the hearse the lead line casket and the cop or I'm sorry the marble uh, headstone um, so somewhere in between there is the shade of gray and you may want to convey what you want done with your body. Some people, the idea of, uh, of being cremated is abhorrent to them, and they're not, they don't want anything to do with that. So have it written in your will or communicate with your loved ones what you want done with your remains. I think it will uh, make life a lot easier for those of us left behind. The second thing I want to bring up here, though, is once you have made that decision, Go and talk to the companies that provide these services so that you know what to do when that day comes, whether it be for your loved one or, 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 so, or pass that information along so that your loved ones know what to do. Uh, case in point here, and I, I say this kind of tongue, biting my tongue, I was lucky in that my mother passed away in a hospital and they had a boatload of services. Uh, one of them was a counselor would come down, gave me a lot of information about grief counseling and gave me a lot of information about burial services. And basically they had about half a dozen companies on there that ran the gamut from the full boat, you know, full blown funeral to cremation services. For me, it was easy, cremation, done. But it was nice to know who to call. Now, the reason why I say I was lucky is that when my father passed away, he was in a nursing home, and more or less they're like, what do you want us to do with the body? Now, that's not to say they didn't have anybody in mind or couldn't, you know, properly dispose of the body, but it made it easy for me because I knew who to call. And I said, I will get you the information. I called them, and told them what happened and they said where's he at and we will pick him up at this point in which case I was able to call the nursing home back and 
get pass that along with that information. Now, uh, that that kind of will lead into the third thing I want to talk about here is paperwork. When you call the funeral services, they're going to want to know a few things. For example, they're going to want to know the birth date of the deceased, where they were born, uh, were they in the military, what was the highest degree of education they have, uh, did um, and uh, what was their occupation. Now that might change from state to state to state, but at least here that's what they ask pretty standard. Now of course the occupation isn't that big of a deal. Uh, what's the highest degree of education? Really not that big of a deal, but it does go on the permanent death record. Uh, one of the things they also do here in Washington State, I do not know if they do it in other states, is the funeral home will actually notify Social Security of uh, that the deceased has moved on and help terminate any Social Security benefits. So, so there, there's all that. So, you know, and if you know that paperwork, and with my mother passing, I had the power of attorney, so I also had to have a copy of that too. So again, have all that paperwork ready, at least have it in your possession or know where you can get to it so that you can answer those questions truthfully and honestly and accurately. Uh, so it just makes life a little bit easier. Now the fourth thing I want to just, again this is an elective, is clear the plate with your loved ones. Uh, I unfortunately didn't have that opportunity with my mom. I mean I did to a certain degree but not as much as I would have liked. Uh, with, and I learned from that and I was able to tell my father and clear the plate of everything. I don't want to, I call them kind of like maudlin moments, they're kind of, you know, lifetime sh schmoopy, syrupy, sweet. But it really was a thing where I just said, you know, Pops, I really appreciate you taking the time to teach me how to become a good troubleshooter. Uh, my father taught me an awful lot about electronics, about electricity, about plumbing, about working on automobiles. Uh, he taught me a lot of things, and I just took time to validate that, for an example, you know, or I appreciate the, fa the fact that he took time to teach me how to play cribbage. So, uh, you know, so if you get that opportunity, maybe take a few moments, sit down with them, and just tell them, hey, you know what, I really appreciate uh, what, you know, we used to go fishing, or you taught me how to do X or whatever. It doesn't have to be long, elaborate, but just... Think of something that what they did really impacted your life in a positive way and validate that and let them know that. Even the most stoic of individual likes to have a little validation knowing that they did something right once in a while. So again, to recap, talk to one another about what you want done with your remains or what, their, what your loved one wants done with the remains. Get some, uh, a couple of companies or organizations lined up so that they can take care of those services that you decide that you want uh, taken care of when the time comes. Make sure you have the paperwork lined up, at least a uh, birth uh, certificate so that you can answer birth dates, uh, uh, location of birth, and so forth, uh, any DD-214 uh, military records, anything like that. And fourth, again, elective. Clear the plate, validate them, let them know what you love and appreciate about something that uh, they may have taught you. Uh, anyways, that wraps up this episode of Malcontent Corner. I hope you find it useful. You know, I, I, I hate to say that because, you know, dealing with the loss of a loved one is a very stress-filled, grief-filled time. But hopefully the information that I'm sharing with you here can just make that time a little bit easier. It's kind of a, a bad time to all of a sudden realize that you need to get this paperwork and oh my god what who are we gonna call to take care of this. It, you know you're already in the middle of that process and having to deal with all these details can be a little overwhelming. So hopefully if this blunts that edge a little bit I think this video was worthwhile. Uh, anyways if you did find this video of use uh, please give me a thumbs up. I like validation too. Uh, otherwise, I do, as always, appreciate you taking the time to listen to me ramble on here. And I hope to see you back here at Malcontent Corner at some future point. Until then, take care, and I will talk to you later.